Your book has a very provocative title. Will you please explain it for us? Well, the title of the book is The Civil War of 1812, American Citizens, British Subjects, Irish Rebels, and Indian Allies. And the book is about how all of those peoples, Americans, the British, Indians, and the Irish were divided by the war and could be found fighting on both sides and in some situations fighting against people of their own nationality. So these people experienced the war as a civil war, particularly in what's now known as Ontario, but was called Upper Canada, which was the heartland of most of the fighting. And generally, we don't call this war the Civil War of 1812. Right. Generally, it's thought of as a war between two nations, the United States and Great Britain. But it's a war in which the United States was not a stable country. It hadn't been in existence for very long. And the people were still very British in their culture. So the difference between the British and the Americans, which is relatively significant now, was much less so then. These are people who spoke the same language, who had the same last names in many cases, and they were fighting and to determine whether Canada would be conquered by the United States or whether the United States might blow up and become several different countries. And it's possible that one of those new countries to come out of the blow up, New England, might have chosen to affiliate with the British Empire again. Now, how was the relationship between the U.S. and Canada at that time? Well, Canada was um, a set of colonies attached to the British Empire, two in particular, Lower Canada, which we now call Quebec, and Upper Canada, which we call Ontario. And Lower Canada was mostly French, uh, whereas Upper Canada had been mostly settled by Americans who had moved there after the American Revolution. And so the United States is invading Upper Canada uh, that's the major set of attacks for the United States in this war. And they're doing so because they hope the local people will support the invaders and help them to win battles pretty cheaply. Do you feel the War of 1812 is a misunderstood war? Well, it's a war that's pretty neglected uh, among the public in that people are um, much more interested in the American Revolution before or the American Civil War afterwards. So the War of 1812 is going to pale by comparison to those. What's something that might surprise us to learn about the War of 1812? Well, most Americans think it was a war in which Americans were fending off British invasion, which the war became in its last year, in 1814. So here in Plattsburgh, for example, site of a major battle when the British invaded. So Americans think about the battles in which they won and fended off British invasion, uh, battles in Baltimore, here in Plattsburgh, or down in New Orleans. What Americans tend not to know about is that the first two years of the war, most of the fighting was in Canada, and it was done with American forces invading Canada and being defeated by the British, the Canadians, and the Indians who were defending Canada. Well, this station is situated in Plattsburgh, New York. Is there mm -hmm. anything the people of this area should realize about the Battle of Plattsburgh? Well, probably one thing is that one of the reasons why it almost went awry, it almost went really badly, was that the American government ordered the main army here to march west to go over to Niagara to help an American invasion, to help extricate those soldiers at Fort Erie who were surrounded by the British. Uh, so it's a rescue operation, but it moves the main army here defending Plattsburgh away and leaves an army of less than 2,000 men to hold this very important naval station. And then, meanwhile, you've got a British force that's about four times as large that sees a golden opportunity to march south because this American army has been ordered away. It was, in a way, an enormous screw-up. Uh, and it's thanks to Thomas McDonough and the little American fleet uh, defeating that little British fleet here in the harbor that rescued the Americans from what could have been a disaster here at Plattsburgh. How did this war affect Native Americans? Many Native peoples around the Great Lakes had an alliance with the British. This includes people living on the American side of the border in what's now Michigan or Indiana or Wisconsin. And those Indian peoples really counted on that alliance with the British in Canada to help them fend off American settler expansion. The war breaks up that alliance. The British, after the war, are not willing to help the Indians to the same degree they were before the war. And the loss of that British assistance enables the United States to accelerate its westward expansion. What would you like the reader to take away from this book? Well, I'd like them to take away from it that it's, it's a fascinating set of conflicts in which people have to make some very hard choices. 
that it wasn't just automatic for somebody living here in Plattsburgh or somebody living over in Upper Canada that they are going to support the Americans or the British. There are people in Plattsburgh who might decide that this war was a great mistake and that really they should go about doing their business as before and indeed maybe they could make more money by running cattle across the border to the British. Or people in Upper Canada might decide that really they should help this American invasion in the hope that the war would end more quickly if they did that. So people are making some very hard choices and in some cases there are quite tragic consequences for people who find themselves literally fighting against people of their own family who have made opposing choices. Spotlight segments are supported by the Glenn and Carol Pearsall Adirondack Foundation, dedicated to improving the quality of life for year-round residents of the Adirondack Park.